Here we are getting started 3D designing. The website we're going to is called Tinkercad.com. Now this, the software is free. It's free to sign up, free to use, and you can download all of your own stuff. When we sign in, you're directed to this page. And I always instruct my students, I'm going to sign in using social providers. So I don't have to make a new account and remember it. So if I click Google, and obviously select a Google account that I want to use. Now here I am signing for the first time. I don't want to sign up for email, so I'm continuing. When you first get into Tinkercad, what you end up seeing is a tutorial. And this tutorial, I've tried it several times and I do not like it. I would prefer to just play with play around in the create new design area. So here we are. Up here, this is the name. It always assigns a random name. And if you don't tell your students, they will definitely leave it random. So definitely put your name in there or what you're doing. This is how you look around on the work plane there. If you find yourself in a weird place, there's a button. Takes you to the home position. What's great is Tinkercad allows you just to drag objects in and you can start right away. You don't need any technical knowledge to start making something. The barrier to entry is very low. So, start a cylinder. It's part of a rocket. There's all sorts of different shapes we can add. You'll also notice it's really easy to add text. Here is where you change what the text says. There are different font options. You can start to round the edges off a little bit. At this point, I would pause and just start pulling shapes in, seeing what you can do with them. Each shape has obviously the size adjust. But also they've got end bars that will help you adjust only one dimension at a time. You'll see that there's a height adjust as well as this cone to pull things off the screen or push them down below. All of these things will be useful. Now if you have an object that you're trying to rotate, like this box for example, there's a way to rotate it around the this axis. Okay. And if you have the mouse out here, you can take it down to the nearest degree. If you bring the mouse inside of the circle, it will click around to the commonly used angles that people use. This is very handy and very important to know, so you're not trying to find adjust something that you just want to click to. Now, this rockets off the screen to go over some more, some, some more controls. The home button will take you back here. If you want to zoom in on the rocket, I have it clicked. That button will, will center whatever object you have selected in the page. Here's zoom in, zoom out. This doesn't get used very often by our students. You may click this top box if you want a top view. You can click the right view. You can also click and drag it. What I often do when I'm when I'm 
going around on Tinkercad is I have a mouse, and the scroll wheel will help me zoom in or zoom out. If I right click, you start to pan around. Okay, but you can see how Tinkercad is not, is off the screen. If I want to get to that easily, what I end up doing is holding both Control and Shift at the same time and left clicking and then you can start scrolling around the screen with the mouse as well. But right now I'm holding Control and Shift as I look around. Here's what right click does. Here's what Control and Shift ends up doing. And the scroll wheel to scroll in and out. You will need to know those to, to help you get around. Other things to know as we get started, the import function, this will work for STL files, object files, so these are 3D files, or SVG files. Now, if you've worked with those before, you can import them and, and be working with SVG files. It will not import a, a picture. So getting out of there, export, when we are finished, we're going to end up downloading the object of the STL files. These are the files that you 3D print. If somebody goes to send to, what you end up with is a picture of your file. So here's a picture that someone could turn in of what has been modeled here in Tinkercad. So it's really easy to turn in a picture of whatever, whatever it is they have. So getting out of here, the next video talks about the work plane and how important that is, but there are lots of shapes to choose from as well as different collections here on the side. So we've been looking at basic shapes and you can do a lot with these. Text and numbers, obviously These will get used by your students. Characters end up being overused by students. I can guarantee you what a lot of people will see is this little robot guy and this mustache on him, with maybe the beanie hat and the sunglasses. I have a lot of recommendations for how to avoid projects like that. Well, since we have some more characters in here, let's go over some more controls. I've clicked on this little guy. Here's the trash can. If we want to make a copy of this little rocket thing, we can highlight more than one thing. There is a copy and a paste button. It's very handy. Control C and Control V also work. Lastly, the undo button. Should everyone should be familiar with. Redo. Students are not familiar with these and if they do something wrong they need to be taught how to hit the undo button. These functions over here are things that we're going to go over in future videos because there, there are a lot of advanced uses for this but since we're just looking at Tinkercad itself so you'll discover there's kind of like a Minecraft version that people can toggle into. Whatever that's worth. And a Lego version that someone could, could populate as well. This could be cool if somebody was actually trying to design a, a Lego something. Or if you made, let's say, a car, you could change it to the Lego setting and make it look like you're, you're having your students design with Legos themselves, but much easier. So these could be handy after you get started. Down here, the grid is what everything is snapping to. So everything is moving in little tiny steps. It's not flowing because it's snapping to the grid. Well, if I want it to snap In larger steps, I can set that to 5 millimeter. If I don't want it to snap at all, we can just turn it off and it'll flow the way you would expect it to. 
So understanding how the grid work will be very handy, especially when you start making discrete sizes of things. At first, anyway, the sizes usually doesn't matter because you're just putting shapes together and then eyeballing everything else. So when you click on an object, these boxes show you what size you have. And if I click on this white box right here, the size of the sphere is 24 by 21. If I want to get this back to round, I can click 21, type in 24, that's round. What if I want the top is only 22, 24. So that's now a sphere again. That's 24 by 24 by 24. Now there's one more thing to show you before we end this video. Back here in basic shapes, there's something called a scribble. And if I pull the scribble in, what it ends up being is a two-dimensional place where you can, well, scribble. You'll see kids scribble at first. And you have a preview show up over here in the side of what it is you've made. I'm going to undo that. I don't find this, this default pen to be very useful. What I usually end up doing is grabbing the shape tool. And let's say I want to make a fish. more like a shark. Now here's what ends up ma being made. That was with the shape tool. If you want to add things you can start adding details to the sides, sculpting. If I want to give it a mouth, there isn't a kind of erase function there. That when you're done tinkering with this, click done, and now that object has appeared. So this shark, if I want to turn it on its side, I find the arrow here, 90 degrees. Well, now it's below the plane, so I use this cone to lift it up. So that's a little tiny thing that was made in no time at all. What you should do at this point is you should get in Tinkercad. You should play with the controls on this side. Try what all these buttons do. You should pull in all the different objects over here. In a future video, we will go over the holes function. But play with basic shapes play with characters and come back. We will talk about the work plan and what you can do with that.